Hello, uh, welcome you all to today's lecture. Um, as we saw in the last class that uh, we looked at uh, various aspects of the allyl saline chemistry, uh, particularly uh, uh, in an intramolecular fashion, uh, where the major emphasis was on the um, stability of the beta carbocation. And that allowed, um, uh, as we saw for the first time, there was a multi component reaction where we had the uh, oxonia uh, cope rearrangement as uh, one of the uh, important steps where uh, we were able to convert and, um, and uh, a vinyl silane uh, to the corresponding allyl silane uh, via a cope rearrangement and then that undergoes uh, the uh, allyl silane based reaction in an intramolecular fashion uh, to give the, the product after of cyclization. Uh, in a similar fashion, we saw a Sakurai reaction uh, in an intramolecular fashion, Sakurai uh, intramolecular fashion and uh, like that led to the conjugate addition and leading to a bicyclic molecule. Uh, in a similar fashion, we saw different types of uh, carbocations that can be formed, uh, especially uh, say for example, the, the uh, ketals that lead to upon reaction with uh, uh, a Lewis acid lead to the formation of this uh, type of intermediate where this carbon is now electrophilic carbon and to which now in an intramolecular fashion, the uh, for example, if you have uh, a substrate or a lyle silane attached to this, then of course, we can think about uh, that this uh, allyl silane intramolecularly can react to, um, to allow the cyclization to take place in this fashion here. And then of course, we get the cyclic product. So, you have a cyclic product form. So, um, like this we also saw the um, ammonium ion to be formed and then ammonium ion could be then uh, reacted in an intramolecular fashion where you have allyl silane uh, in, a, in a way that led to the bicyclic products and then we saw two uh, uh, natural products uh, which we uh, discussed in detail. Uh, now, um, we will see uh, uh, the uh, uh, remaining aspects of allyl silane based chemistry for some other interesting reactions. For example, if we uh, take um, uh, a diene of this type where the silicon carbon bond is attached at the end of the diene. And if uh, we take a dienophile like this, then as you know that uh, a diene and a dienophile undergo uh, Diels order reactions. And so, this is basically a Diels order reaction which um, uh, Diels order reaction. Now, um, the, uh, the dienophile is symmetrical dienophile this particular dienophile is symmetrical dienophile. So, it does not really matter uh, which way uh, the diene is oriented. And uh, once the reaction occurs, then of course, as you can see that uh, you have here the, um, the um, carbon silicon bond, which is now alpha oriented. When this reacts with a proton or an electrophile, then of course, the electrophile reacts with this particular um, double bond and uh, there are two possibilities. The possibilities are that whether the double bond uh, reacts, supposing we simply say that this is the um, part of the uh, product that is here, 
without worrying as far as the stereochemistry is concerned right now. Uh, though there are two possibilities this double bond can react. One is that it, it gives the uh, electrophile attachment at uh, this particular end of the double bond here. So, if this is the electrophile that is going to attach then of course, silicon will be here and the positive charge will be here. Now, this positive charge is uh, very far off uh, and therefore, uh, there is no specific uh, reason why this carbocation will be stabilized. On the other hand, uh, if uh, the, uh, uh, the electrophile attaches on to uh, this end of the double bond. So, if we have uh, the uh, attachment of the uh, electrophile here, then you generate a beta a cation like this where now as you can easily appreciate that this is the alpha position and this is the beta position and therefore, there is a beta carbocation stability. So, this particular carbocation is, uh, is uh, here where you have a beta carbocation stability leading to the product that as we have seen it here. So, uh, now uh, as uh, we can see that the, uh, the uh, electrophile attaches uh, opposite to the carbon silicon bond as we have discussed it last time also uh, that the, um, the attachment takes place on the opposite uh, phase uh, and therefore, the uh, since the carbon silicon bond is alpha oriented here it is alpha oriented and therefore, the electrophile attaches from the beta phase. And of course, the, the junction and all that is decided by the uh, rules of the diels order based reaction. Now, uh, uh, we can also take another example in which uh, there is a very interesting uh, uh, cyclization that of this kind where the uh, allyl silane is uh, inbuilt as you can see it from here and then that leads uh, after the uh, aldehyde uh, chelates or coordinates with the tin tetrachloride, uh, it forms an isomediate which um, uh, will be um, then attached by the gamma carbon here this is alpha gamma, this is beta and this is the alpha and therefore, the attachment takes place from this side in this fashion and via this uh, carbocation here. Now, how does this reaction occur? we can try and see that uh, how uh, this um, particular part undergoes as uh, cyclization here. So, we can think about that uh, we have here, um, here something like this. So, you have a, a five member ring here where there is a hydrogen and then of course, we have this here there is a hydrogen here. So, this is the alpha hydrogen, this is the beta hydrogen and this is what the silicon based things come. So, once the Lewis acid uh, coordinates here, so you have a uh, essential 4 for example here you have a positive charge and the negative charge here. And then uh, this is uh, position number 1 uh, here, position number 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, this is the 6 member transition state which we can uh, write it here. here. So, now uh, when the reaction occurs you have this is what is coming here and this is what is happening here. Now, this is the intermediate that is formed as um, you can uh, see that when the reaction occurs between this one carbon atom number 1 and the carbon number atom 6, 
the carbonyl group is oriented below, which is what is alpha oriented here and the hydrogen is beta oriented. So, this is what is the hydrogen which is correct. And once this carbon uh, number 1 and carbon number 6, they interact with each other, there is a positive charge at the carbon number 2. This is the carbon number 2, this is the carbon number 1. So, this is carbon number 1, this is carbon number 2, which is beta to the silicon and therefore, there is an orientation between uh, the carbon silicon sigma bond and the p orbital they have a, uh, such an orientation that they can easily overlap and then they can stabilize the uh, beta carbocation. And thus that leads to the product formation like this. Now um, we can also uh, do uh, one thing that we can start uh, with a molecule of this type and react with an alpha beta unsaturated ketone in the presence of cuprous iodide to form this intermediate which upon treatment with the Lewis acid leads to the formation of this cyclopentane derivative. This Gignard reagent can be prepared from this vinyl bromide upon treatment with magnesium and then when this Gignard reagent reacts with cuprous iodide this cuprate is formed. This cuprate then reacts with the alpha beta unsaturated ketone in a Michael addition fashion to form this intermediate. And when this intermediate reacts with the Lewis acid like this, the Lewis acid interacts with the oxygen making this carbon electrophilic. Then double bond reacts with this particular carbon atom from the gamma end because then a cation will form at the beta position which is beta to the silicon and thus there is a beta silicon effect that is driving this reaction to eventually make uh, this particular cyclopentane derivative. Now formation of this kind of cyclopentane molecules reminds of the 3 plus 2 cycloaddition strategy using parallel paradigm complex. Now we take a compound like this instead of a Gignard reagent and this particular molecule has an allyl acetate part as well as allyl silane part and when this is reacted with an alpha beta unsaturated ketone in the presence of palladium 0 like this then of course we get a product like this. Now we can understand that in case this particular starting material is reacted with palladium 0 then acetate acts as a leaving group and the palladium 0 forms a what is called as a pi allyl palladium complex and the X minus basically is an acetate ion which has come out from here then reacts with the silicon and generating a carbon ion here. So maybe we can consider this particular species when uh, X minus uh, removes the silicon to be equivalent to this kind of 1,3 dipole because there is a double bond and of course there is a positive charge because the acetate has gone. Therefore, this can be considered to be as an allyl cation and this silicon carbon bond is broken therefore we can consider this as an anion. So basically this particular part represents as a 1,3 dipole which adds on to alpha beta unsaturated ketone in this particular fashion to form this cyclopentane derivative. In a similar fashion if we take an inbuilt allyl acetate and allyl silane and of course an alpha beta unsaturated system like this and if we treat with palladium 0 then we get this kind of bicyclic molecule already there is a uh, enough number of carbons to make a cyclopentane on the left hand side and the right hand side part anyway leads to the formation of a cyclopentane derivative and thus we get a bicyclic molecule like this having two cyclopentane rings. We can imagine that this particular part of the molecule here can upon treatment with palladium 0 leads to this 1,3 dipole the way we have shown it here and thus the negative charge then attacks onto this alpha beta unsaturated system and eventually it closes to form the 5 member ring. Now how does the pi allyl palladium complex formation occur? When we have an allyl compound of this kind which has a leaving group like X, X can be an acetate chlorine, bromine or iodine and when palladium 0 interacts with this kind of allyl compound there is 
Coordination as the first step, that means the double bond interacts with the palladium to form this kind of pi complex or the coordinated molecule. Then there is an oxidative addition between this carbon X bond to form this species in which the inversion occurs. That means the carbon palladium bond forms from the opposite side to this carbon X bond leading to the formation of this kind of species where the palladium is now in palladium 2 oxidation state. Now we can write this particular species in this kind of pi allyl palladium intermediate type where the uh, complex is of eta 3 type. Now there is a ligand exchange x goes as x minus making the palladium as positively charged and of course a neutral ligand like uh, L which is a triphenyl phosphine in many of these cases then eventually forms this pi allyl palladium complex like this with a positive charge on the palladium and also palladium being in oxidation state of 2. Now nucleophile then adds from the opposite side in such a way that again inversion occurs accompanied by reductive elimination. So eventually what happens is that the carbon X bond which has gone is then substituted by a carbon nucleophile either on the same carbon or on the other side depending on the structure of the molecule eventually leading to another inversion that means in all there is a retention of configuration overall. So there is a net retention as you can see it here. Now during this reductive elimination process then of course the palladium zero comes off and of course that will have a coordination with the double bond as we had in the beginning and then the uh, final product is released and along with the regeneration of palladium zero. Now we can imagine that although this all involves a highly stereoselective uh, transformation but we can say that in, in nutshell what is happening is that this allyl X uh, moiety which has a X as a leaving group eventually forms a cation to which palladium zero interacts to form this parallel palladium complex and then of course the nucleophile adds on to this parallel palladium complex but the main process that takes place is as shown here. Now if we take a molecule like this as we discussed earlier then of course we can imagine that this pi allyl palladium complex formation occurs just the way I have shown here or the way we have seen it here. Then of course we get this pi allyl palladium complex and then the acetate ion which has come out in the case of allyl acetate then takes the silicon from here generating this kind of uh, anion and of course that undergoes 2 plus 3 cycloaddition. So this is how the reaction occurs and of course in this particular case as we discussed uh, that the, um, the positive charge uh, of course can uh, keep on uh, shifting or the negative charge keep, keep on shifting. So you have a pi allyl palladium complex say you have a pi allyl palladium complex here. and this can be written up equal to something of this kind. So you have um, uh, so you have a negative charge here and a, a positive charge here. After the, uh, the uh, acid, acetate has taken away the carbon, uh, the, the carbon silicon bond being broken and something like that is formed and the positive charge is here. This can also be written up as though equal to negative charge being here, uh, the negative charge being um, here.
and the positive charge here. And of course, we can also think about CO2 ET here or this can be written up equal to and the negative charge here and here. This is what undergoes in cyclization forming the final product. So, um, so basically it is nothing but uh, uh, and all these cases the, uh, the allyl cation is stabilized by the palladium 0 or, or the uh, palladium species which is formed. Now, um, it is also seen that uh, the, um, the uh, palladium reactions uh, can also be quite useful in C-C bond formation in a slightly different way. Uh, for example, if we can start with a, with a substrate like this, which does not have any silicon, but the only reason I am mentioning about it is that it can allow C-C bond formation using the same concept of pyrrhyl palladium complex. As you can see it here, that uh, the, uh, uh, the acetate is beta oriented and um, therefore, the, um, uh, the pyrrhyl palladium complex forms from the alpha side. So, you have here uh, the ester group which is present here and uh, the, uh, the pyrrhyl palladium complex formation will, will occur from the alpha side, alpha oriented. And uh, then to that the nucleophile which is nothing but this particular nucleophile, this attacks from opposite to the alpha side that is from the beta side. and that leads to the formation of the product. That means it is like a, a, a retention of the stereochemistry uh, where the acetate had uh, attached. Uh, and opposite of that in, is in this case since the uh, acetate is from the alpha side the palladium um, attaches from the beta side and then the nucleophile again comes uh, opposite to the uh, carbon palladium bond. So, that is basically a retention of configuration. So, here uh, you have uh, the uh, uh, stereochemistry being now uh, in a similar fashion here, but now what you have is a beta. Uh, orientation of the carbon palladium bond and that leads to the formation of the C nucleophile here that leads to the formation of the nucleophile being here. So, it is not uh, the uh, geometry of this particular uh, ester group uh, is important. What is important is, uh, is the uh, orientation of the uh, allyl acetate. Uh, in both the cases and as you can see that the, um, the reaction of the palladium 0 uh, is highly stereo specific because it is uh, an SN2 prime type of reaction eventually. Now, we can also see uh, that uh, we can uh, uh, react the allyl silane in a uh, nucleophilic fashion also. Uh, not only allyl silane reacts with an electrophile, but also uh, in the Lewis acid medium, but also we can uh, make the reaction to undergo if you use a fluoride ion. So, you have a F minus and a positive charge here. Uh, so, F minus uh, takes the uh, uh, carbon silicon bond breaks and generates the anion here. So, it is the chemistry of anion not cation. So, now what you have is a um, enone of this type uh, where you have now uh, oriented an allyl anion. Because the silicon fluorine bond strength is quite high, therefore fluoride ion immediately reacts with the uh, silicon and silicon carbon bond breaks because fluorine silicon bond strength is much higher than the carbon silicon bond. And once this happens, then you have an intramolecular uh, cyclization 
that leads to the formation of this particular bicyclic intermediate. Now um, uh, we will um, uh, we will stop it at this particular stage and uh, take up the um, silicon based chemistry particularly vinyl silane based chemistry in the next class. Uh, till then you can uh, go over whatever I have discussed it uh, today and then uh, we will uh, look at the other aspects of uh, silicon based chemistry in the next class. Till then bye and take care. Thank you.